Democrats have shown a stark, stark contrast in the reaction to this attack and Christchurch attack. And the reason that this is a really fair comparison, and it's rare that we have a comparison that is this apples to apples, is because the Christchurch attack happened very recently. So there's not a lot of time elapsed between the two of them. And in both cases, it happened in a foreign country, and it happened where the victims were persecuted specifically because of their religion in a place of worship. And so because of that, comparing people's reactions to the two in these two events is, is far more fair than most of the time when reactions are compared. And I did want to go ahead and show you a tweet that was put out by our former president, Barack Obama, where he says, the attacks on tourists and Easter worshipers in Sri Lanka are an attack on humanity. On a day devoted to love, redemption, and renewal, we pray for the victims and stand with the people of Sri Lanka. Now, here's the thing. On its surface, I don't see anything wrong with that response. I don't. There's nothing technically wrong with it. And I saw that it was catching a lot of flack by Christians and people on the right for Obama referring to the worshipers as Easter worshipers and not Christians, which... I frankly thought was being a little nitpicky. I thought that conservatives jumping up on him for that, that really was, in my mind, when you get your dander up over something like that, that's at least seemingly pretty benign. I thought that that was being way overly nitpicky and they were just being harsh on him because he's Obama, and, and I get it, I don't like the guy either, but I thought that it was a little unfair and they were they were choosing their battles unwisely. The reason that I suddenly really did a 180 on that position is because Obama's not the only person to use that, that phraseology. That phrase, Easter worshipers, was used by a ton of Democrats when they responded to this either on Twitter or in interviews. We're going to look at a tweet from Hillary Clinton. There were other big prominent Democrats that used the term Easter worshipers. And the reason that I think that this is so problematic is because you look at and compare this to the tweet from Barack Obama in the wake of the New Zealand Christchurch shooting on a mosque. Michelle and I send our condolences to the people of New Zealand. We grieve with you and the Muslim community. All of us must stand against hatred in all its forms. Now again, on the surface, in a vacuum, nothing wrong with that response at all. I don't see any problems whatsoever on its surface, just looking at the, the tweet itself, with that. There's nothing in that that I wouldn't say, except, of course, say Michelle and I, because, of course, I'm a single dude. But I would just say I, you know, condemn these attacks and, and my heart goes out to them. But I want you to, to look back at it really quickly. There's a couple things I want you to notice here. Um, do you notice that he specifically names who the victims are? He specifically names the victims. He says that they're Muslims, which is, again, accurate. It's correct. But why does he use specifically Muslims when he refuses to use the term Christians there? Because there's no such thing as an Easter worshiper. Nobody worships Easter that I'm aware of. Nobody worships the holiday of Easter. I don't even celebrate Easter. I mean, not as a religious holiday. I mean... Usually when I was a kid, I would get some chocolate eggs or something like that, but we never really celebrated the religious side of it. And uh, I gave an explanation of that a couple of years ago on Christmas. It's not something that I begrudge other Christians for doing. It's just not something that I really personally do, because the only command that we get from the Bible is that we're supposed to celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ every Sunday in the Lord's Supper. That's the command that's given from the Scripture. Again, I don't have a problem with people looking at Easter as a special day or celebrating it in a different way than they do normally. I'm just saying that for me, it doesn't really do anything for me, and so I don't really think of it that way. So by Barack Obama's definition, I guess I wouldn't even be an Easter worshiper. I wouldn't even be in the community of people that were attacked on Sunday. But that's the thing. We're not Easter worshipers. We're Christians. We worship Christ. That's where the name comes from. 
And so it, it really is just incredibly bothersome to me that Barack Obama refuses to say in one tweet when the victims are Christians, he refuses to call them Christians and refer to them as a victim, a victimized group. But with Muslims, he has no problem directly talking about Muslims. This is a guy who refuses to use the phrase and banned it from his administration that they couldn't use it in official reports or anything like that, that they were not allowed to say radical Islam, not even just Islam, radical Islam. They weren't even allowed to say radical Islam when giving reports on things like terrorism. And so that really is the difference here. That in the first tweet, you can see that he's talking about Easter worshipers and it's an attack on humanity. Not an attack on Christians, an attack on humanity. Now again, on its surface, I don't see a problem with that. But the problem is, Democrats have had this tendency to, whenever there is a attack on a specific group that they don't really like or they're not really fans of, whether it's Christians or white people or conservatives or whatever, they generally refer to it more widely or more broadly as just an attack on humanity in general. Now, is that true? Yes, to a degree it is. But the point is they don't want to isolate the group that's being attacked and mention them specifically because they don't want too much sympathy going out to that group. We saw this with the handling of Ilhan Omar, that when she was launching anti-Semitic attacks and continues to do so on a regular basis, that when they came up with something specifically Democrat lawmakers, people in her own party put out a resolution condemning anti-Semitism their plan was to, well, let's just water it down and make it something that condemns all kinds of evil, all kinds of hatred, just condemn hatred generally. You see, they don't want to single out that specific group because that's not a group that's important to them. They don't really see that group as someone that is worthy of victim status. And so this is the reason that they kind of dance around the issue. And whenever it's Christians attacked, or whenever it's white people that are attacked, or it's Americans that are attacked, it's referred to as just humanity in general. It's hatred against humanity. It's not hatred against the specific group. When it's a Muslim that's attacked, and as horrible as that is, and that would also, in my mind, be an attack on humanity, because they are, of course, humans regardless of their religion, then it's specifically an attack on the Muslim community. And actually, a much worse version of this came from Hillary Clinton. If you'll look at her tweet after the Easter attacks the other day. She says, On this holy weekend for many faiths, we must stand united against hatred and violence. I'm praying for everyone affected by today's horrific attacks on Easter worshipers and travelers in Sri Lanka. So again, you're seeing this term, Easter worshipers, and this term I've never heard before in my life. And yet seemingly all kinds of top Democrats are using it all at the same time. That's when I really did a 180 and said, okay, maybe this being upset about Easter worshipers and Obama referring to Christians that way, maybe there's something to that because they continue to use this. It's almost as though they got together and workshopped this term because a term that is used by that many people on the same time in the same instance, that didn't just happen. They didn't just simultaneously all happen to have the exact same idea. This is clearly something that has been workshopped. It's clearly something that some strategist somewhere crafted and then word got around the Democrat community. I'm not saying they all got together into a star chamber, but what I am saying is they were definitely talking to one another at some point, and somebody had come up with this phrase and it got spread around because somebody at some point had asked the question, all right, how do we avoid saying Christians? How do we avoid acknowledging that Christians were the victims in this attack? And Easter worshipers is clearly what they came up with, and all the Democrats said, yeah, that's pretty good, let's run with that. Maybe not all at the same time. Like I said, I don't think they necessarily got together for a big secret meeting somewhere. But the point is, in the larger network in the Democrat community of high-ranking Democrat officials, somebody came up with the phrase and everybody ran with it. And they did so specifically because they do not want to acknowledge that Christians were the victims here. And you'll also notice 
that in Hillary Clinton's case, she tried to again do the same thing that Barack Obama did. So instead of calling it an attack on humanity, she tried to broaden the fact that this was specifically an important day in the minds of many Christians. She just said, well, it's a, a holy week for many faiths. Now, the reason that Easter occurs when it does is because it is also the week of the Passover. And so, yes, this is a very important weekend for people of the Jewish faith. And there's nothing wrong with acknowledging that, but Jews were not the ones that were attacked. Now, Jews are attacked all the time, and when they are, it's 100% appropriate to point that out, and I do many times. I'm just saying that this is another example of Hillary Clinton trying to avoid specifically talking about Christians and specifically talking about them being the victims of persecution. She's doing everything she can to muddy the water and make it vague as to who was being attacked, and she makes that clear with her second tweet as well. This tweet was the one that was her reaction to Christchurch in New Zealand. My heart breaks for the New Zealanders, the global Muslim and the global Muslim community. We must continue to fight for the perpetration and normalization of Islamophobia and racism in all its forms. White supremacist terrorists must be condemned by leaders everywhere. Their murderous hatred must be stopped. Again, don't have a problem with that response. That response in the New Zealand shooting, 100% appropriate. But you'll notice that the tone and what she actually said in it is very different than her reaction to Christians being attacked on Easter because she specifically named who the victims were, she specifically named who the attackers were. She expressed sympathy with the larger community of people, in this case the Muslim community, of the specific mosque that were attacked. So she expressed her sympathy for every Muslim because this was an attack on all Muslims, not just all humanity. And finally, she expressed specifically that the hatred of white nationalism must be denounced. You'll notice that in her most recent tweet, in her tweet in response to the bombing, she doesn't say, well, Islam, radical Islam needs to be stamped out. We need to do everything we can to stop radical Islam. She doesn't say that, even though that's who the attackers were. So she names the attackers and the victims. She expresses sympathy for the larger Muslim community and talks about how evil the hatred of white nationalists is. When she tweets in response to Christians being attacked, it's very vague and she doesn't want to talk about it. And that really boils down to they really just do not want to acknowledge that Christians can be victimized, that they can be persecuted because they're afraid that showing too much sympathy might enrage the intersectional left. This is the Frankenstein monster that the Democrats have forged and they, they've created it and now they can't control it anymore. Because if they show too much sympathy for groups that are not approved victim classes in their mind, then they're afraid that the intersectional left, the Alexandria Ocasio-Cortezes of the world and the Ilhan Omars of the world, are going to come after them. And it's a fear that unfortunately is 100% legitimate. Now, another thing that should be brought up here, there was a report that was done on Christian persecution that found that Christians are the most persecuted religion on earth. Now, granted, it's not much more than the Muslim community. We talked about this a little bit the other day, that there are 144 countries where Christians are persecuted and 142 where Muslims are persecuted. But another study that was put out in Newsweek, this one was done by a, uh, a foundation that it, it is a Catholic foundation, I believe. Uh, they did a new report on persecution from 2015 to 2017, which was reported in Newsweek earlier today. And they found that the worst offenders of Christian persecution are China, Egypt, uh, India, Iran, Iraq, Nigeria, North Korea, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, Syria, and Turkey. And what's amazing about this study is that they not only found that the persecution just in general, in, in numbers, and in people that were persecuted increased. But that what they said is over the past two years, 2015 through 2017, they had seen a marked increase in the ferocity of those attacks. And according to the conclusions of this report, Christians are now more persecuted 
in the world, wide, uh, more widespread persecution going on now than ever before. I don't know if that's true or not, especially when you consider that we've only been keeping records on these things for the past maybe a couple hundred years. But what they're saying is based on the time that they can look at, they're saying that Christians are persecuted more harshly and more often than at any other point in history that they have numbers for. And that these past couple of years saw a very high spike in raw numbers of Christians persecuted and the severity of that persecution. But here's the thing that I want to really sum it up. I think one of the reasons that Christians are less affected by not getting victimhood status, the reason that Christians do not come out and talk like victims or act like victims is because the whole idea of Christians being victims is absolutely abhorrent to the Christian mindset and the Christian faith. And the reason is very simple. Christians follow Christ, and Christ was not a victim. The greatest injustice that has ever been perpetrated against a human was perpetrated against Jesus Christ. And yet, he was a conqueror, not a victim. Why? Because he chose to be. And because of that, Christians that follow his example don't think of ourselves as victims. Because we conquer even in death, even in torture, even in slavery, which is going on in all of these countries specifically because of Christians' religions. All of these things are happening, and they've been happening since the very dawn of Christianity. And yet, we don't talk like victims, we don't act like victims, we don't ask for handouts or want to be coddled. Christians think of ourselves as conquerors because we're following the example of the greatest conqueror that has ever lived, who conquered death by being murdered, who conquered the evils in the heart of man by being subject to and being the target of the worst parts of the human soul. You see, the reason that Christians don't constantly whine about being victims, even though we acknowledge that it's happening and it's happening more to us than any other religious group in the world. The reason that Christians don't constantly seek after that victim label is because we don't want it. Because no matter what the world does to us, no matter how much the world despises us, and Jesus warns us that the world despised him, so it's certainly going to despise his followers as well, that no matter what in the world happens to us, no matter what the world does to us, Jesus has already overcome the world, and so we don't have to worry about that. Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist, which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.